Hello, everyone, and welcome to this very unique uh, episode of Succumbing. As you have probably noticed, uh, it is just Ori in here for today. Tonight, Don't worry. I'll be playing all the parts. Yep, exactly. You'll be playing the role of Marcival and John Mary. Can you uh, can can you give me like your your best Marcival? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is me, Marcival. I love <laughs> my girlfriend, John Mary. <laughs> Can you speak some Icelandic for the chat? No. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, all right. Uh, but yeah, so how this is going to go is that uh, following what happened last session, uh, we're going to be basically doing uh, what's going on on Eddie's side of things uh, before doing another recording, which we'll be recording tomorrow, which... If I have to make a guess, this is probably either going to be mashed into one big episode or made into parts. And the next part itself will be uh, following more particularly Marcival and Jean-Marie for the first half before everyone conjoins uh, for the last big act as we are on the final episode of Succumbing, which makes me sad. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I... <laughs> Stop crying. What the hell is wrong with you? Come I'm on. sorry, all right? Jesus, get yourself together. Uh, listen, I know. Uh, listen, I'm sorry. All right, I know. I know that like <laughs> masculine men are not supposed to cry. Yeah. It's just it's... grown ass man. <laughs> <laughs> grown ass man crying Thank over you, a Rem. bunch of fictional people. <laughs> wah wah wah. Thank you, Rem, for that quote. <laughs> Re a shout out to Rem uh, in the shout chat. Out to Rem. Uh, if you, if you want. If you want to know who Rem is, join our Discord. Yeah. Uh, Rem hasn't seen any of this show yet. <laughs> yep. I can't wait for Rem to watch this uh, five years later. Yeah, Rem is gonna, and I, I'm sure of this, Rem will be putting Rem mention in the chat with like three of the little cat emojis. Yeah, exactly, that like doing the hard thing. Yeah. Like, Rem, I'm, I'm so happy that you finally finished university and you're you're having your thir first kid. Like. Wow. <laughs> Congrats, no, Rem. because that's a, that's that's how long it takes Rem to watch like these episodes. <laughs> Poor Rem. <laughs> Rem, we love you. It, we do. If you guys want to meet Rem and get to know more about the inside jokes, yes, Discord is there. Uh, mm -hmm. We also have other socials. Uh, go check them out. Uh, we gotta like update our TikTok at some point. <sighs> yeah. Bro, I'll just start like a coming video up with ideas. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> oh my, we should do like future or you can like put a Kirby here and hi, uh, edit those out. We should do Hold like on. a. But yeah. Uh, besides that, do we have any announcements? Um. Ori Lumpy Noir. This is coming out next Saturday. So, oh my God. Okay, so. Yesterday, if it's the 10th today, our fourth episode of Baldur's Gate 3, holy shit, will be coming out. Oh my god. Um, and then next week, we are doing an extremely fun Root uh, stream, which is a <gasps> asymmetrical board game um, that will have me, Kai, and Wyatt on it, as well as a new Whoa. cast member. So <gasps> come check that out. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, oh my yeah, god. I think that's everything. Alright. Then in that case, let me give you a quick recap of what happened in the last session of Succumbing. So, last session we left off. Uh, Eddie, you were able to get, uh, with the others, the chance to start actually investigating the Ouroboros Mount Resort. This place that you've been searching for for roughly a couple of weeks now and knowing that this could be the place that is hiding away uh, Peter and Queen Fairchild after you've been basically dedicating the last couple of weeks and the trials and tribulations you've ha been going through in order to find them. When you and the others made your way inside, you found yourself uh, entering into a very dilapidated uh, resort. The hotel itself what was once which was once beautiful well carved out and the architecture just gleaming of the um more aristocratic inspiration of its time had fallen in disarray it's 
uh, walls being covered uh, with broken materials, the floor itself being filled with trash, and most particularly, it seemed activity by people that are not particularly very fond of outsiders. These uh, symbols and runes and pieces of gore that you found here and there that were just littered around, about giving off a very uneasy vibe you were able to check out some files that were at the entrance that basically documented a worker's experience here during the last months before the, uh, the resort itself uh fell to the ouroboros mountain massacre and you definitely noticed that upon looking at some of the stuff that was written down on there that the massacre itself was not had high chances that it wasn't actually orchestrated by its owners like media itself has proclaimed it to be, but rather that of an attack by strange beings and creatures, to which you would guess would probably be something like what the Menza is. After finding this out, you guys were able to explore a bit of the resort itself, hiding away from cultists uh, that use these strange amalgamations of bodies and parts as guard dogs, and that were living out this terrible low moan. Uh, able to sneak away from them, you guys uh, found uh, more clues on what exactly happened here, and particularly found uh, not only a journal documenting a hiker's experience here and knowing about maybe a way inside to what seems to be the lair of these strange creatures and the cult itself, but also what seemed to be Adrian of all things, after uh, finding him amongst some corpses in what seemed to be some sort of butcher, play, uh, sort of kitchen slash butcher shop, which was uh, to being taken care of by one or another of these strange creatures, uh, which was a humanoid that, if there was anything human about them, it's slowly but surely being lost, as their back was very much like that of a snake and just looking like an absolute mess. Uh, alongside the others, you guys were able to kill it, um, as you were able to stab it multiple times in order to take care of it after Marcible was able to cast a very powerful spell. Your switchblade that you've been using for the last couple of weeks, uh, weeks broke off, and you, instead you, used, you picked up a meat cleaver that was there on the site, serrated and rusty, but good enough for a, a melee weapon. You, uh, alongside the others, interrogated Adrian, not knowing how he was here and wondering if this is actually the real Adrian or if the Adrian you've been with was real for the whole time. And after er, making some deductions, you found out that, yeah, this Adrian seems to be the real one, while the one you were with the whole time seemed to be somehow related to this cult. And it kind of like sat in... Yeah, you were in love with somebody who may or may not have loved you back. Mm -hmm. After finding this out, you got you uh, joined them, and eventually you made your way to the top of the hotel itself, where you found the person that you were looking for this whole time, Isaiah Jericho Doe, holding some sort of congregation with some cultists, uh, some of them of which uh, included your parents, which you definitely enjoyed seeing the, them again. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> as well as Marcible's grandmother and a bunch of other people preaching about anything and everything, really, not having any sort of order to it, but just all talking about wanting to purge the corruption of the world. Eventually, this congregation leapt into some sort of portal that was caused by this little obelisk that uh, was going to bring them towards the game. This thing that you've heard about from the Menza and from the eye creature that uh, killed that one hiker that you guys saw back uh, close to Austria. After that happened, you were uh, you approached Isaiah in order to kind of get the the spin on who he is and also try to like see how you can get inside. And you two had a conversation about the nature of humanity as a whole, the matter of hatred, the matter of division. And how Isaiah uh, started following this being called Yatuital. This being that promises 
unification through the eradication of corruption, any sort of corruption, what, uh, what somebody finds cr is corrupt or hated, uh, they will practically support it and basically causing this huge fanfare to which they, uh, he says that at the end of it, once um, Yatuitol has seen enough of this corruption that was brought upon by his cult, would bring this guiding unification together so that there would be no more hate in the world. To which you basically reacted, this sounds like a cult. Mm -hmm. uh, and didn't really buy their stuff, but be understanding the fact that this game could be your best way to get directly to uh, Peter and Queen Fairchild and not entirely saying no to what he was saying, but not entirely saying yes, you accepted to become branded and become directly a part of the game where uh, Isaiah would be able to bring you directly down into the lost city of Omrad where this game is being taken place. Uh, you also had uh, Adrian also decided to come with you as he did not feel comfortable knowing that you'd be going alone. So asking Marcible and uh, Jean-Marie as well to see if they would be interested, they responded no. And uh, as uh, you were being brought in by Isaiah, he basically gave you guys the slip on basically allowing you into the game and not wanting to necessarily tell Marcible and Jean-Marie about um, basically actually tell them about ways to get their way inside and stuff and say that they would have to be sneaky. Why he does this is not exactly sure. But nonetheless, you made you made your way inside uh, through the actual room that belonged to the owners of the resort itself before passing through a very circular and similar door to that you saw in the cave. And as it was, a, uh, you passed an object that you found on one of the groups from the hikers. Actually, Marcible did that. As Marcible uh, took one of the objects uh, that they found from a hikers group that seemed to be some sort of like object, a uh, stone tablet that was related to the door, you guys, uh, you guys were able to open it up and make your way inside. As you did so, you were able to see a grand lost city, architecture of which seemed a bit, it seemed a bit like non very euclidean like it seemed like the buildings themselves had the same look to them like if they were plastic buildings that were molten and the uh, rock itself was very much like that marble that you saw that was very dark purplish and the fissures that usually would be in marble were moving slowly like stuff that was not of this world and as marcival and jean marie left behind had to be left to their own devices and find how to take them, care of themselves within this part of Omrad that it was overlooking. You are currently being escorted by Isaiah down to the city itself with Adrian right at your side. Mm -hmm. As you're going down this these winding uh, paths and puzzle and tunnels to which the way you see they're organized, they're kind of like that of like an ant's nest how they have tunnels that lead to somewhere up and then down, or that it seems like different tunnels seem to be like related to certain places, but not entirely. Passing through this maze, is there anything you want to try to do? Do you want to say anything to Adrian, to Isaiah? What do you want to do as you're being escorted? Uh, how is Adrian looking? He's... He's definitely scared. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, I'm going to... Make him see if he can go through a sanity check. And I'm going to actually ask you to roll me a sanity check as well, okay. since you've never seen anything like this before. Can I hold his hand if it's okay if he's okay with that? Uh, He will need it, as he failed his sanity check. Oh, okay, I got an 11. An 11? Nice! Yeah, so I have to roll below a 69 right now, right? Yep. If not below an 80? Okay. Oh, nice. You guys didn't take that much uh, sanity damage done. Um, you lose uh, four sanity after seeing this build uh, set of buildings and stuff. And uh, Adrian's going to lose eight. Um, he's You're holding onto his hand, uh, trying to like help comfort him. 
but you can tell that the way he's looking at this all at his at this all if his mind wasn't already broken from being like caught up in bodies and almost being butchered his mind seems to be even more broken seeing things that are far beyond what he would ever expect to be of normal civilization and you see like you can tell that like from the way you're holding his hand he seems to start shaking a little bit okay i can't comfort him right now as much as i really want to uh, mm-hmm. i'm gonna look to isaiah and i'm gonna say how do we find our friends are you just gonna take us right to him or how he... are we supposed to find these people mm-hmm He's currently floating, basically, in front of you right now. You can see that... Now that you've been around him a while, you've definitely noticed that there's something different about his physique compared to the physical description that Dr. Uh, Martinez gave you. As you see that, not only with the robes that he has, that uh, have this... On the back, you recognize this very uh, familiar symbol of the hollowed-out ring that has flames going around it and the eagle in the middle. Um, you also see that uh, he seems to have like little like mounds of his flesh that kind of like seem to like kind of move very slightly. And as you ask this, he doesn't turn around, but you watch as like the back of his head where his hair is. It seems to part a little bit. And you see eyeballs uh, peer out from the back of his head and a mouth form parting the hair itself and you hear him say uh i have no right to actually show you around the game itself as doing so would be blasphemous and result in my death however i will bring you to the edge of the city of omrad and You'll be particularly entering through the West Wing. The city itself has been divided into four sections. That being... Let me get my notes. That being of the Beak, the East and West Wing, and the Plumes. What? The Plumes. Oh, okay. Which, basically, in uh, other terms, is supposed to represent North, West, East, and South. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. These... These sections, if I have... If I remember correctly from... uh, What the... Other high members of the Quanit have said... They have... Each... A small amount of survivors... In them. All in very particular predicaments, either from themselves or from the devotees that I've sent down there to enjoy in their slaughter. If you are lucky, you might find them in one of the set sections. Um, okay. Thank you. And he doesn't say you're welcome or anything as the mouth and the eyes just kind of (laughs) like... Form, uh, the skin itself kind of like s- f- mends itself back at the back of his head and his hair goes back to normal. Okay. I'm gonna kind of look over at each other and I'm gonna like make a face like, what the fuck? Okay. Um, yeah, he's he's gonna look back at you and um, he, he th- this whole time like he seems like kind of like spacing out after especially seeing that. Um, just kind of like twitching his head a little bit and just kind of seems like he's walking forward but at this point he's barely clinging on to the remaining sanity he has left hey i'm gonna like turn him so that he's facing me i need you to stay with me okay i'm not going in there alone okay i yeah i I just yeah i know it's a lot and i'm scared too but it's going to be a lot worse if one of us doesn't have our heads around us. Because if one of us dies, then the other one's alone, okay? And that's a lot scarier than having a friend in there. 
Yeah, yeah, you're right. We gotta stay together. Yeah, we'll be fine. Okay. <sighs> I kind of like pat him on the shoulder. Mm hmm. He doesn't seem to react much. Uh, think, of, uh, think of New York, okay? Right. New York. Planting nights. Lots of people. And he just starts muttering these things to yourself, himself, as he's just trying to, like, keep focus on that and not focus on the sights themselves around you. Mm -hmm. I'll say, as you're making your way down these winding tunnels and paths, eventually you, you notice that at some point certain, like, particular beings of strange proportions and sizes, um... These people that, just like um, Isaiah himself, all wear these tattered ropes and look humanoid, but are floating and sometimes have very, like, diverging, like, physical descriptions. Uh, one of them, that their spine itself is kind of, like, sideways and kind of forms, like, some, like, N from it. Uh, one of them having way more arms than needed. Uh one of them with having like a head like a head that seems to be kind of like having like um multiple eyes or parts that are not supposed to go here and there and sometimes like you definitely see like one of them two of them pass every now and then as you're making your way through the trail and they kind of just look at you in silence not any way like in hatred or in kindness just pure neutrality as you're making your way down Mm -hmm. and eventually as you do you arrive to this um opening that is on the same level as the city itself you see in front of you is this blocked off wall that seems to be made of coagulated blood and flesh and you watch like as there's a bunch of people inside of it that have seemed to be like, some of them seem to be like there for a long time. So others have been added there recently. And Isaiah um, pats his hand onto the wall itself. And you just watch as all the blood and gore itself just falls to the ground in this large pool of blood, opening up the entrance to you. And you see before you the large almost i would want to say max like two to three um no actually no like 100 to 150 foot tall buildings just in front of you all in congregation in weird ways and he looks at you and goes this is the entrance to the game Kind of look over at Adrian. You ready? Yep. That's as much as I could ever be. Okay. I'm gonna grip my uh, meat cleaver in my other hand. As I look up at mm -hmm. Isaiah. Um, for what it's worth, and hopefully this isn't treading any bad ground, but I'm sorry if, you know, whatever, for whatever happened to you in that, um, asylum, you know? He looks back down at you. I'm gonna say, because you said that, roll me a charm check. <laughs> okay, okay, where's my charm? Oh, I'm okay at that, please roll well. 43. What do I have in charm? 55. 55? <gasps> you, rolled a, you rolled a straight 55? No, I rolled a 43. I have a 55 in charm. Oh, nice! Alright. Um, I'm gonna say, as you're about to make your way in, Isaiah looks back at you for a moment, and he goes... I won't lie when I'll be honest that Marlene did do the best she could. I, it was only through Yet to It All's grace that I realized that 
my life wasn't the best one, and I was ridden with hate and corruption. War definitely changed as a man. I hope that, for whatever it's worth, on your side as well, yet through it all, blesses you with safety and grace. Thanks. Uh, good luck out there. He nods. And as you pass your way through, you... Like, just kind of, like, walking through this blood and gore and trying not to pay attention to the bodies in it. You kind of look at, uh, well, no, you don't kind of, you do look at Isaiah. And strangely enough, despite all this, like, presentation of a member of this cult, somebody who is in control, who is, like, speaking the grace of Yatuital, for a split second, you feel like you see the glint of a broken man. And one that is just deeply, deeply sad. Mm. Before he raises his arm and you watch as after he mut mutters some some words under his breath in, in a word in a language you can't understand. Uh, the blood, the coagulated blood forms back up into a wall. And you are now in the city of Amrad, communing in the game that is the succumbing of Yatuital. Okay. Where do you want to go first? Do you want to go to the beak, one of the wings, or to the plumes? Okay, What? where, where did he say that our friends were? He said one of the wings, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to make sure that we are crouched down in the shadows and mm -hmm. stuff. And I'm going to try to have us start making our way towards the wings. Is there any, like, okay. signage around? You look around, and if there is any signage, these the way that it's presenting is not like anything you've seen before. The, the very architecture of this place is... After, like, especially now that you see it up close, it's not like anything you see before if anything like a good comparison to what it looks like you know how weird the architecture and dr seuss books are yes oh that's a great it's, visual it's something like that where the rock itself forms these things that you have no idea how they would be useful for anybody living down here let alone like a human but the way itself is all formed out it's like it's this coagulated madness of architecture that should mean nothing but yet for some reason seems to have a purpose to the beings that used to live here and as you crouch down i would like you to make me a stealth check okay okay i forgot am i good at stealth i have a 20 in stealth uh i can't read what that says hold on you're fine 31. 31. All right. So it's a fail. Uh, yeah. And, uh, it's okay. It's okay. Adri it's okay. It's okay. Adrian rule of the 50. So, especially being very scared about having to find anything else that's remotely close to the butcher, mm -hmm. he's going to use all his luck points in order to succeed finally. Oh, shit. I have luck points. I got a 31. Mm -hmm. I actually. Oh, wait. Did I regain any luck points? At the start of the session, because it's just I have zero right now. Mm -hmm. I'll say that. <laughs> Sorry. No, you're fine. I don't think I'm um... gonna use them now either. But I was it, just to have them to fall back on. But no, I, I get what you mean. I think. I think knowing like this is like going to be the final session, I'll give you thirty luck points. Thank you. Okay, and of I'm not course. gonna use them now. I want to make sure that I stay alive. <laughs> oh, I'm so scared. Okay. You're fine. Um, I'll say that as you want, uh, you make your way into the city itself, darting back uh, through these roads, sometimes using the main ones, sometimes using these weird alleyways that seem to go on top of buildings and some that don't. 
you definitely get the sense of the large scale like well small scale battles that there were here and there sometimes you see like upon the road you have to like look and then you have to like immediately hide away from the sight of any sort of bodies that would be in the main road which a lot like all at all times you definitely can tell that these are people that were kidnapped here too mm -hmm. um and as you make your way uh through the city itself um there you kind of hear the sound of what seems to be like screaming and fighting do you head in that direction mm, where are we right now you're still currently in the west wing right now i think we'll try to sneak up maybe from a couple blocks away just so that we can make sure it's not any of our people mm -hmm. but also far enough away that we're not going to get like spotted in the fight you know what i mean mm -hmm. like i want to know what's going on i don't want to be a part of what's going on gotcha unless i have to sure Knowing how badly I'll... i rolled on stealth. no that's very fine i'll say that um as you make your way through um Sometimes you definitely feel the sentiment that you're not alone as you're making your way kind of like towards the fight, but not necessarily to join into it. And as you're kind of like making your way like uh, through, you eventually get the sight of what seems to be the fight going on as it seems like a bunch of these survivors of being kidnapped, which strangely enough, you're looking at them some of them seem to be not of this time period as you see two people yeah see you see two people that are definitely people from your time period wearing the clothes of the era and all that but one of them you see is somebody wearing tattered le letters and holding up this broken piece of the rock itself that he seems to be using as some sort of great club as he's smashing it into the head of what seems to be one of these cultists as this other one that uh seems to be um even further than that uh that he's wearing just uh, noble aristocratic clothes uh is having a knife fight with somebody else that after kind of getting a good look at them seems to be your own mother oh shit as it seems like your mom your dad and like a small group of other cultists are currently fighting these survivors. Okay, so that is good to know that when we run into like any survivors from the past, I can just cough on them and their immune systems will not have evolved enough. They'll just <laughs> die. Um <laughs> Yeah, Eddie kills like two contestants by giving them like the common cold. Yep. Um, oh my god, okay. That's my mom. Yep. Do I recognize the people from my own time? Uh, yeah, you do. Okay, I'll say it's like it's like it's not like finding a needle oh. in a haystack. They stick out like a th sore thumb compared to all the worn robes and out of era pieces of clothing. Well, do I know who they are? I mean, uh, you do not. Okay. I don't want to risk us being seen. So I'm going to kind of, like, squeeze Adrian's hand to try to, like, mm -hmm. and, like, look over at him to be, like, should we stay and help them fight, or should we run? Um, because if, I'm gonna say... because if we heard this, then other people mm -hmm. heard this, too, and they're probably going to be on their way. Mm -hmm. I'll say, um, Adrian kind of looks at you and goes, I'm not going to lie here yeah, as much as... I would want to help them out. I, I don't want to stick out, stick out like a sore thumb and get ourselves killed. Mm -hmm. We just gotta hope that they were they're able to take care of those cultists. Yeah, I really fucking hope so, and I hope it's a painful death for them too. Anyway, <laughs> um, he, by any normal circumstance, he would give you like a weird look, but right now he's just, he's just like, yeah, uh, these these cultists are assholes. I nod, and then 
I'll like take his hand and we'll kind of start heading in the direction of the other wings or continue scouring this one. How much of this wing have we gone through already? Uh, I'd say like forty percent of it. This lost city itself is not necessarily huge. Yeah. Uh, in like size and stuff, it's more like what you can probably imagine being deaf inside the buildings that helped keep its populace at the time. Got it. Okay. In that case, we'll keep exploring this area for now. Definitely mm -hmm. steering clear of the area where the giant fight is happening, though. Gotcha. And I'll say that as you're making your way out of there, I'll say from the corner of your eye, you saw, like, kind of observing the fight, this long, spinnily, like, kind of, like, spider-like being mm -hmm. that you saw with, like, the head kind of, like, detached in this, like also kind of like serpentine way just kind of like looking around the corner and observing the fight and you swear that as you were about to switch the corner you saw the head of the menzo look at you okay shit so we're gonna start making our way towards somewhere where we can hide is what we're gonna do mm -hmm. that is All right. absolutely what we're gonna do all right um do you try to hide in a building? Do you try to hide in an alleyway? Uh, yeah, let's try to hide in a building. All right. It's probably not Roll a me a idea. Mm -hmm. Roll me a stealth with advantage, since you're going advantage. inside. Advantage! Okay, I got a 32. I'm gonna use... 12 luck points to get myself in this building, because Demenza is scary, and mm -hmm. Eddie doesn't want to get caught by him, so I'm going to use my luck points, and fucking All right. Adrian, you better use your luck points too, you failed! <laughs> um, about that, uh, he it's... used all the luck points he had earlier! Okay, uh, uh he'll be Demenza bait, okay, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, I'll say that... Him. So I continue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, you're good. Uh, I'll say that as you're making your way through, uh, trying to like not be pay uh, paying too much mind, you make your way, uh, and as you're like trying to like find a place to hide and remain low, you start hearing the sound of what sounds to feel like multiple loud like needles just scratching into the ground like kind of making their way louder and louder towards you and as you um you make your way you eventually find a building that seems to have like an entryway that is dark on the inside enough that you feel like you can hide in it you merely dash into it um but as uh adrian is about to do so too you notice that like he uh, stubs his toe into uh, the door entrance, not really noticing a piece of a particular rock, and he falls down on himself, like, letting out this... <laughs> and, like, falling down. Um, he... You hear the sound of this tech 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 uh, making his way closer and closer. Do you help Adrian, or do you stay uh, safe in the oh. darkness? Don't make me choose. Oh, God. I'm not gonna be able to kill this thing, and it's gonna eat him and me. Glancing around, do I see anybody else around? Like, in a split second? Uh... Looking around, you see... You, you, you see to your right, you immediately look away after not wanting to look at it, but you saw the feet of what seems to be, like, a corpse to your right. And judging by this choice, if I don't help Adrian, I'm not going to be able to, we're not, if I help Adrian, we're not going to be able to get to the door, is what I'm understanding from this choice. Probably. <sighs> you could try to help him, but you would have to roll another stealth on yourself in order to make sure that, like, you and him are able to stay sneaky, which... Granted, it would be a good advantage in the darkness, but it's still you would still have to roll under a 20. Uh, fuck. Fuck, 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 fuck. 
I don't want to leave him. But the odds of me bowling below a 20 are so slim, it's not even funny. And I need mm -hmm. to find my people. And oh, I care about him oh, so much. And I'm. I, I'm kind of staring at him. I'm gonna roll. Zach, high mm -hmm. or low? Uh, I'm gonna say low. Okay. I look at him and I. <sighs> I look at him and I say, I'm sorry, and I'm gonna go and duck into the doorway. Mm hmm. You do so, and Adrian, you hear Adrian uh, cry out. Eddie! Eddie! Uh, before you immediately hear the Menza in this gargled up voice goes, <gasps> Before you hear Adrian laid out this terrible blood curdling scream, do you look in the direction where no. Adrian is? No. You don't. You don't hear it. You merely. You don't see it, but you immediately hear as his blood curdling scream, as you hear the sound of <sharp inhale> the sound of what seems to be these, or you can imagine something on the Mensa stabbing twice into Adrian. And as you hear him scream, it immediately starts to go out. And as it's yeah, he gets stabbed another time, you just hear him go, <clears throat> <laughs> Before you hear a, you still hear a. Well, I guess Eddie got really into the succumbing then. How about I show you to the occultist? And you hear a, the, like the sound of Adrian's uh, body being dragged as he's being his. Uh, you hear him being dragged away as you hear him sc his scream immediately loud start to faint more and more as he seems to be taken away. I think that's the hardest decision I've had to make in the game. Mm -hmm. oh. And I'm going to say because you had to do that with your morals in order to survive. Mm -hmm. Eddie, roll me another sanity check. I will. Um, 37. 37. Ah, oh, you lucky bitch. Uh, lucky. you take... Mm-hmm. Uh, you take one point of sanity oh, damage. Roll it again. I'm not taking one point <laughs> of sanity damage from that. All right. Oh yeah, no, that that is, that is way more fitting. Uh, you yeah. take uh ten points of sanity damage. That feels more right. Okay. And what's uh your current amount of sanity out of your total? Fifty-five out of eighty. I'm gonna say I'm gonna give you a new trait. Awesome. Where, especially in this case, uh, and probably for the rest of your life as well you feel like if at any point there is something dangerous going to be coming your way or you actually no you know what i'm going to make it even more personal um especially in this case and in the future when you're going to have your back turn the moment you hear any sort of like rapid sort of footsteps or loud footsteps behind you you're immediately going to be panicked and look behind you to see what it is Awesome, 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 awesome. Okay. <sighs> Hold on. Let me write that down. Of course. What I'm going to now do is I am going to... The, 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 the building that I'm at, the door is unlocked. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go into that building for a little bit is there mm -hmm. can i hear anybody inside you do not okay 
in that case, I'm gonna go find myself a little corner to sit in and just kind of cry for a couple minutes. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Fuck. Yeah, okay, so I'll sit for, like, five minutes, probably, at most, to cry. Not that I don't want to be crying mm -hmm. more, but, like, I need to keep moving or else I'm gonna get caught and killed. Cause... No, you... Yeah, you, you gotta keep moving in order to yeah. find your folks. Okay, in that case, I'm gonna stand up. Is there anything in this building that I can grab? Um, I'll say that after you just sobbed for the last five minutes, just comp eh, contemplating the fact that you basically had to let Adrian get taken away and most likely killed by Dementia, you get up just feeling weak and not necessarily limp, but you have this feeling like the blood in your hands feels like they're barely there as you look around. And within your vicinity, I'll say that you notice what seems to be an old skeleton, actually. The likes of which seems to have uh, a person that from looking at some of the um pieces that were on them seems to be that of somebody who used to be from the era of the knights templar mm -hmm. and you see where they used to be is that they're clutching a rusted out but still present sword Okay, in my years of being raised as a rich kid, have I ever used a sword before? Uh... I'll say, um, it was definitely... Actually, yeah, actually. I'll say it was definitely, it was actually something that your parents kind of enforced on you, especially your mother. Mm -hmm. You don't know why she was so adamant about you being particularly good at fencing and fighting. Especially like when it comes down to blades and stuff. Uh, but at the time, you just thought, oh, maybe this could be like some sort of means of wanting to like make sure that I'm safe out in the streets or something like that. But after a while, and just kind of putting stuff together, you can definitely tell mo now more than ever that she's been hoping to quote unquote purify you and bring you into this cult one of these days to slaughter in the same way that she is i hate her i'm mm -hmm. gonna i'm gonna keep my meat cleaver like on my belt and i am mm -hmm. gonna take that sword all right uh, that... Add that. Sorry. uh you can just add that manually into your, your um items that you can use as weapons right. and for the stats itself i'm gonna say that it does uh 1d8 uh, plus two, Ooh. because of like the rust itself in it, plus your damage bonus. Okay, so it's just one d eight because my damage damage bonus is minus two. <laughs> yeah, so basically you'll be rolling either a one to an eight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how much range does it have? Um, I'm gonna say that it has roughly the same range as your meat cleaver, so you have to be like in distance to brawl. Okay, and then it has like the same skill stuff as my meat cleaver. Uh, for the sake of, uh, yeah, it's basically, uh, your fighting okay. brawl skill. Sick. Okay. Cool, 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 Perfect. Okay, thank you. Of course. Cool, then I'll take up my sword. Fucking hell. Alright. Alright, and then I think what I'll do, is there, like, a back door or anything that I could go out of? Because I'm imagining that the guy probably heard Adrian calling out for me, which, like, understandably... So I'm trying to find like a back door to go out of just to make sure that he doesn't catch me coming out of the front door. If he assumes mm -hmm. that I went into here. Absolutely. I'll say that uh, you look around and you don't see a, ba a conventional back door, but you do see like a window that seems to like be placed just really close to the soil. You can probably crawl through it. I will crawl through it. Yeah. All right. You crawl right through it. Bear trap. 
<laughs> yeah, and then the trapper from DBD gets you. Fuck. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Those are the rules. Those are the rules. I should have rolled a perception check. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, sorry, continue. <laughs> no, you're good. I'll say that you crawl through, um, and as you kind of make your way out, you kind of look around to see, like, in the area to see if you're being followed or anything like that. You don't see the Menza or any other being in this immediate surrounding, but you do see a long blood trail from where you imagine Adrian was stabbed, and you look down into the, the middle of the street, the cultists that were fighting off against uh, those uh, those contestants, you watch as like um, the last one standing was that one with the studded letters and the piece of rock. But uh, they, one of them eventually like they overpowered at them, and you watch as like they brawl and like eventually get the. Uh, uh, the mallet out basically from his hands and luckily you're far away from not to not see any of the gory details up close but you can imagine that seeing like the upwards motions and the downwards swing that they're doing you can imagine that this uh last contestant is being a uh, club to death as you look in just like to the right and you see your mom is holding the head of this person that they had a knife fight with holding the head with the, their uh, uh, hair for, uh, in one hand and holding a bloody machete in the, net, the other. Fucking psycho. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to keep moving. Definitely in the opposite direction of where they are. Sounds good. I'll say you keep making your way forward. Mm -hmm. uh, roll me uh, a stealth, and now that you're alone, roll me that with advantage. Mm-hmm. Okay, I got a 31. I'm rolling, like, just higher than my thing. It's really annoying mm -hmm. me. No, I got you. Uh, Alright, I'll say with a 31, you uh, make your way through, uh, passing your way from the west wing to the east wing, as you kind of see, like, you pass your way through the center of town, and it's actually as you make your way in that you see, like, center stage... Compared to all these buildings that are very, like, unique and, like, different in their architecture that you've never seen before, this statue in the middle is the only one that you can recognize as being human. Mm -hmm. And as you look at it, you see something that kind of puts you on edge. Not enough to already break you more than you already are, but enough to kind of send you dread down your back. As you see a statue. A statue that depicts Earth. And on this earth, you see on all where the major continents are, are, any source of land and any source of water is covered in the old blood that has been aged with time. Blood that has turned into a very dark, murky dark. And this would be somewhat spooky if it wasn't for the other part of the statue that you see is right next to this thing. This thing that the eye itself that is looking at the earth, you recognize that as being the moon. And it seems that like the moon itself seems to be kind of like this protruding eye, this singular protruding eye looking at the earth as around this moon is a very large being you look at it and it seems to be somewhat spherical like a planet but much much larger mm. roughly around the size of the sun and it's the thing that like definitely gets you on edge is that like it's spherical, but instead of being like an actual sphere, it looks like it's more of like a more round cone that like is very thin at the top and goes more and more into the middle 
before having a very large and round basis that forms another cone uh, conjoining at the bottom. Okay. And you see this thing is just staring at the earth. <sighs> okay. Um, Eddie's kind of had maybe an idea. I've like, when I've been running around, have I been seeing like corpses on the ground and stuff? You have. Okay. May I approach a corpse? I'll say that, yeah, there's a corpse actually right next to this statue in particular uh, that, if you had to make a guess, is actually what seems to be a cultist that has been dead for a very long time. Good. Okay. Um, can I see any blood on them? Uh, it's aged, but okay. you can, if you pass your hand inside the corpse, you could probably take out some blood from it. I will do that, and I would like to roll a, a disguise check to try to pass myself off as a corpse by, like, rubbing blood all over myself and stuff like that to try to use that as a last-ditch effort if I need to. You know? Interesting. All right. May I do that? I say you can, and okay. that knowing you have your expertise with presenting yourself in a way that is you, but not entirely you, uh, roll me, what would I say? A disguise. This? Yeah, roll me a disguise, uh, okay. <laughs> what advantage? Okay, cool. 28. Now I roll. 28. I have a 75 in disguise, by the way, for everyone that's watching. I thought this would come in handy more often. <laughs> I am sorry it wasn't. <laughs> hey, I knew coming into this campaign that it wouldn't be. Don't worry. <laughs> it's okay. If you ever have like a character that focuses more on disguises, you'll use them more in the future. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway. Uh, but yeah. I'll say that you take the old blood of this cultist... And you pass it over yourself. Uh, definitely trying to pass it on very particular points where you would know would be like vitals and places that you can imagine these th these people would want to rip out organs and vitals and stuff like that. Uh, and if you were on the ground somewhere, you would definitely appear like a, a very dead corpse. Sick. Okay. And in fact, I'm going to say that as you pass this blood on yourself and you give yourself this intention... Uh, you get the feeling that uh, within yourself, you feel like uh, your body itself kind of like reacts in a particular way to this blood being smeared on yourself. And you kind of feel like your own being is changing, not too much, but in a way that's particularly based on your will. And I'm going to say that at will... You can also make your your skin and texture itself of your body look exactly like a corpse that is indistinguishable by anybody. Shit. Okay. Dude. I'm like a VH VF VFX artist before they were a thing. Yeah, you you're like you, you like if you if you are now like the best VFX artist of the 1930s. <laughs> Y'all wish we had good enough movies back then. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh, VFX artist, eat your heart out. Eat your heart out. <laughs> um, no need for CGI on Eddie over here. Exactly. Um, I do all my own CGI. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, I will... Yeah, I guess... How much of this w wing have I explored by now? I feel like that's going to be a repeated phrase for a lot of the episode. <laughs> You're fine. I'll say that like the amount that you explored... Uh, you definitely explored most of it, and if you, there was any signs of anybody around here... You have not found them. Okay. In that case, I am going to try to start making my way towards the next wing. All right. Sneakily. You start, making your, you start making your way through. And because you're wearing the disguise and stuff of corpse, I'm not going to ask you to make any more stealth checks. Awesome. Every time I just see somebody, I just fall onto the ground. <laughs> yeah, you just go face first like plop. I have so many bruises by the end of this. You don't know what's actually, like, your disguise and yourself actually being bruised. 
Yeah, actually, the whole reason why it's passing off is just because I've actually been bloodying myself from falling face first. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Listen, you got a bloody nose, but it's worth it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to look awesome. Don't mm -hmm. worry. Uh, I'm not even worried about how I look right now. I'm worried about living. Um, which is a first you know, very for Eddie. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so, <laughs> Eddie will... Yeah, he'll make his way kind of try to make... Eddie will try to find his way towards the next wing. All right. Sorry, I stumbled I'll over my words. You are completely fine. I'll say that you do. And as you pass your way into this next wing, you start looking around for any signs of human activity. Again, you have to avert your eyes from any signs of bodies around in, uh, from the people that used to be contestants here. And occasionally... You feel like you hear the sound of like rapid steps coming your way, and out of instinct, you dive into like a shadow and put your disguise on. But you look behind you, and it doesn't seem like there's anything there. As it seems like being in this very city itself seems to be messing with your mind. Mm -hmm. And as you continue onwards, I'll say eventually you see it. Uh, you see a cultist um, that's on the floor. Uh, and around the, uh, this, uh, them are the bodies of other contestants uh, and people that have died. But above this cultist is somebody wearing cultist outfits as well. And you watch as they take this large piece of rock that they were able to break out from a part of the, the building itself. And you watch as the cult is just like on the ground, kind of like just turns around looking up and kind of gives this grim smile before this other cultist slams the rock down onto the head and you hear this terrible crunching sound as you just see blood and gore part from it. And you can see that as like the hood itself like kind of like slams down, you can see the co the hood kind of comes off, and standing before you, you see a very tired and very bruised Peter. A cultist. Wearing cultist robes, but you can't tell exactly if he is a cultist or not. Shit! Shit! Fuck! Okay, shit. I. Fuck. Okay. Is there's uh, nobody else around? There's a cultist? Not him? I'll say that, like, as you're, um, uh, you're saying, uh, like, uh, you're checking around and you dodge into a shadow in order to hide, you watch as kind of hearing out, you hear, are, are they dead? And you hear the familiar sound of, uh, yeah, I think there are. Uh, Shit! Uh, John, do you think you still have any materials to patch me up? And you see kind of like, looking both ways, kind of like making uh, his way out is uh, Jean-Marie's wife. Uh, not husband. wife, husband. Husband. <laughs> husband. Ayo. Uh, John, uh, make his way out from this hiding hole. Uh, you can see um, he's ripped off the parts of his shirt to make a man, uh, like, uh, like made up band-aids showing off his very average body and <laughs> that the only thing he has left is like his pants and like the ripped up shirt he has like kind of like it's kind of like when you take a hoodie and you wrap it around yourself yeah it's basically that but like the remnants of his shirt just around on him he, ha he does no time to really care about style or no, the intention sure. to care and you watch as uh he comes out just approaching uh peter and he takes out like a th like a needle and this very like very mincely tied piece of cloth and he looks at peter and goes yeah i think i could maybe try um come in i i also gotta make sure that fairchild is also okay eddie kind of is listening to this conversation and when he saw peter he was definitely very hopeful about mm -hmm going to him. However, he's kind of stopped in his tracks. Now that he's heard the three people that they are looking for 
are all in there together. Mm -hmm. And part of him kind of feels like this is a bit too good to be true. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I don't want to die here. Because this is my thing, is I'm here alone, out of character. This is my thing, is I'm being extremely mm -hmm. cautious with what I do, which is what Eddie is probably doing now. Because I know, and he knows, in character and out of character, that he is fully and utterly alone here. And yeah, if like, he if, you, if you fight, like... Move, he will die. Yeah, if you meet, like, more than, like, one cultist, or, like, you have to deal with, like, the Menzo or any other, like, higher member of the cult, you're fucked. Yeah. I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to try to follow them in the shadows for a little mm -hmm. bit just to see where they're going. And then I kind of want to just be a bit of a creeper and kind of just watch them for a little bit. Sure. I'll say that you have no problems doing so. As you notice that the blood itself also seems that you've covered on yourself from the cultist seems to have helped you to kind of cover your tracks as well. And you feel particularly more one at one with the shadows. Mm -hmm. And you make your way uh, after Peter makes his way inside following John. You follow a little bit in suit, but like find an opening, a, a broken piece of the wall, and you just look inside and you just start watching them. As you see, inside of the room seems to be this sort of um, hastily made little safe house. Um, and you can see that uh, the there's not a lot. And for what there is, it's basically just cracked pieces of rock that are being used in different ways. Like, w like some of it being like formed into some sort of like little chair. O other parts have formed around to make this like little like these pieces of bedding that you can see are also having these pieces of cloth mixed from what you can imagine being the contestants and cultists alike. And you see on one of these bed mats almost the same way that you remember him well her actually in this case all those years ago is queen fairchild laying on this bed you see with what seems to be um the parts of her dress uh being ripped off as well and being used to stench up wounds that have been made and you can see she's just like slowly and silently breathing, just trying to like gather up any strength that she might have left as you watch as John is tending to Peter. As you see, he's got a nasty gash that was made on his uh, right arm where you see like there's a cut actually with the cultist ropes that like he's taken off at this point, revealing the same outfit you remember him wearing when he was bartending all those years ago. And you can see him kind of like just looking up at John and being like, oh, shit, do you think this can probably get infected? And you have John that kind of looks and goes, honestly, probably. But if we just follow the rules and find the other contestants, I guess maybe we can make some sort of plea. I, I guess I I don't know you saw what happened to Samantha yeah how she turned after interacting with the blood of one of those things but who knows maybe if we try that it could be like some sort of show of like Devotion or something? Look, I don't know, John. I... I don't know. Well, look, just... Don't worry about it. You're recovering from your wounds. We'll... I'll stand guard and make sure that you and Fairchild are alright, and... I'll... We'll think of something. If I had to make a guess, there's probably not a lot of contestants left anyways. And if they are, I saw more of those cultists make their way inside. We can probably take the opportunity to just 
let them fight it out, remain on the down low, and maybe we can see one of those shepherds again, or whatever the fuck they're called, and see if we can make something out of it. Sure. Yeah, that, that sounds good. All right. I'm going to see if I can take any of the supplies I found upstairs and make something out of it and who knows we can I can see if I can get to Fairchild talking more about that dynamite and you watch as uh, John makes his way up like this very strange set of stairs before Peter uh, just kind of like sits there you can watch that the happy expression and character you've known him as and that you fell in love with all those years ago seems to have died a little bit. Mm -hmm. And in its replacement is just a very exhausted exhausted and tired looking man. He seems to have his wits about him still, but he has heavy bags under his eyes. His hair is no longer in a bud and just disheveled and messy and all over his face and you can see that like there like seems to be parts that have been tried to been cut manually by himself but have long since been abandoned and it's just long hair and a very bushy beard and he just seems to be very unkept okay are there any open windows for the upstairs uh there seems to be openings upstairs, yes, but either you would have to sneak your way inside and pass through them, or you would have to, like, climb the wall. What would I have to roll to climb the wall? Is there just a climb? Uh, there is. Okay. Yeah, there is a thing to climb. You would have to roll climb, yeah. Um. Okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk over to the front door I think mm -hmm. and I'm gonna maybe knock once and then I'm gonna mm -hmm. go and duck into the shadows behind the house okay is there any rocks nearby I'll say that there like there is rubble and uh, pieces of rock that are big enough to hide yourself behind uh no I'm gonna take a little rock that I can hold okay. in my hand and I'm gonna go knock on the door and then duck into a corner oh sure yeah I'll say that you take a piece of rock with you Okay. And you see, like, you see Peter kind of, like, tense up immediately at the sound of, like, the door knocking. He looks at Fairchild, uh, who's still, like, slowly breathing, trying to get some strength back. And you watch as um, he grabs uh, what seems to be a mallet of broken pieces of uh, wood and... Uh, these rock that has been wrapped together up with cloth from clothes and he picks it up and looks in the direction of this uh, knock and you see uh, he breathes a uh, he takes a couple of deep breaths before uh, doing uh, the um, motion of the father, the son, and the holy spirit no, and fuck. okay he gets up and slowly approaches the door. Okay. I'm going to wait until he opens it. I'm out of sight of the door. Mm-hmm. I'm going to wait until he opens it. All right. I'll say, like, he slowly opens up the door, just barely peeking out. I'm going to kind of uh, throw the little rubble across the street to try to make it sound like there's somebody over there. Mm-hmm. Alright. I'll say you do so. Uh, roll me a throw check. That's a thing? Man, they yep. have everything in this game. They do. Ooh, okay. Uh, 11. Hold on. 11, I have a yeah. 20 on my throw. Fuck yeah, dude. I'll say with an 11, you you don't know what it is recently, but you just feel like, you don't know if it's Adrian's death or 
the rush of adrenaline of seeing these people together or just maybe it's even the blood that's uh you you placed on yourself but you feel a rush of adrenaline that makes it so you take your rock and you throw it and you actually reach on the other side of the street and you see uh peter immediately like close the door after seeing this and like kind of like just kind of stay in front of the door like kind of hiding on the side of it and just not taking his eyes off it just like still kind of trying to peek if you wanted to try to sneak now his attention is definitely not going to be on you. I wanted to sneak in through the door is the issue. So I was kind of hoping that he would leave. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. so. There's still the opening that you're kind of like looking all this through that is wide enough that you could pass your way through if you want. Fairchild seems too quite, like weak to talk, right? Or scream? Yeah, Fairchild doesn't... She doesn't seem to be in like any position to really like get up and try to like look for anybody in the surrounding area. So, but she, you can take this opportunity to just sneak past. She wouldn't be able to yell for help. This sounds you, like I'm going to kill her. I'm not going to kill her. <laughs> you have no clue. Okay. Where are the stairs in, like, reference to my little hole that I can slip through? And where is Queen Fairchild? Like, if I slipped through this thing, would she see me? I'll say that the... Like, Fairchild is basically to the north of this room, where it's just it's just a blank room with, like, the bare amount of, like, materials and stuff that, like, are left here to kind of serve as furniture. Uh, the stairs themselves, uh, that are kind of weird, are more to the west, and there it's, like, basically just a straight line from the opening in the wall to the stairs themselves, and Fairchild her herself is more to the north. Roughly, I'd say, like, a good couple, like... 20 to 30 feet away so if if she were to try to see you which on top of the like the your newfound ability to be a lot more sneaky she would have to like you would have to roll like really really low okay so are you saying or really really high in this a case. good chance or a bad chance i'd say you'd have a good chance okay i'm gonna slip through and i'm gonna try to move for the stairs without her seeing me all right uh, I'm gonna say that on top of rolling with advantage, since you've been having the blood this long on yourself for this long, I'm gonna say that your stealth goes from a 20 to a 40. Oh, fuck. Okay. I'm starting to have doubts about this blood, because he did say, like, oh, the blood that was on Samantha, or whatever the hell her name was, that mm -hmm. made her evil or something. And so I'm kind of having second doubts about having all of this. Right now, I don't care. Okay. And you said mm -hmm. advantage? Yep, you also Ooh. roll with advantage. Twelve. Twelve! Fuck yeah! I'm on a and roll! Then... <laughs> yeah, yeah! As you make your way through, just, again, this new rush of adrenaline that makes you feel more confident in your ability, you sneakily pass your way through. The clean, uh, cut-out rock underneath your feet is takes your uh, silent steps well and like the darkness itself you just pass your way through and start making your way to the stairs okay and i'm gonna climb the stairs and is this sneak still going as i'm going up the stairs yep okay when i get up where is john john is kind of in this other room that is just vacant and big but instead of it being empty you watch that john is currently looking down at a dead cultist and or, or like what seems to be a dead cultist that after like you give a good look at he seems to actually have found the body of something more than just like the average like devotee like your mother he seems to actually have found somebody who has like the same mutations that um that isaiah showed oh. and you see that like um he has like he has like these like um tools and stuff that like are are kind of bloody and stuff on the side but that are like his scalpel and stuff like that that he hasn't touched and right now he's wearing like what seems to be like these makeshift like cloth gloves from like cultist robes that he's like ripped off and like tied together in a certain way and he's currently just like dissecting this thing and you can see sometimes like 
he retches a little bit from looking at the inside, but you see he still just like tries to keep going and focusing on what he's doing. And you kind of hear him like kind of muster under his breath, go, holy shit, all right. Yep. Yeah, totally, okay, yeah. Oh, is would my stealth keep going if I crept up behind him? Sure. Okay. I'm gonna put my meat cleaver up to his neck, and I'm gonna say, don't move, and don't scream. I have a question for you. He immediately, like, tenses up, and you, you see he just, without instinct, he just drops the serrated blade that he was uh, using that you can tell is also close to the meat cleaver that you have. Yeah. What, what is I it? I don't want to hurt you, John. I want you to think you know? real hard about your answer to this. And I want you to tell me what the club is that your wife goes to. Uh, you hear him kind of like hesitate for a moment. And... Uh... He thinks about this and goes, Well, that depends really. She really goes to different clubs depending on uh, her mood of the night. But I know that one she was particularly going for was the Garden of Diamonds. Mm -hmm. And why would she go to the Garden of Diamonds, John? You want to tell me that? Uh, she told me that it's. It, it's a very good spot to meeting people of the same sex. Eddie kind of thinks for a minute, trying to come up with another question for him, just to prove that he's real. Because after the scene with fake Peter, he mm -hmm. is not really putting up with this. No. Absolutely. How do I know that you're not one of those creatures? Um. Alright. Uh, I guess you can ask me a, a question. If you're asking me about my wife, is because you know Jean-Marie? Jean-Marie is your wife? So you love her? I mean... Love in the way that is legally binding. Mm -hmm. I'll be completely honest. She spends most of her loving on other women because that's the her, who she is. I I am not interested at all. I just wanted to have a good job and not have to worry about marriage. I lower my meat cleaver. My name's Eddie. Me and Jean-Marie, we were coming here to look for you. We got separated. It's a long story. I just had to make sure you're real because we've had a lot of people coming around to us pretending to be people that they're not. And I'm sorry I'll for say threatening you. I am sure that you're a very nice person, but I really cannot take any chances here. I'll say that like he's he still had his back to you because he's and like his hands still up because he's still like just he's hearing all this and like he's kind of scared to turn around and he goes and how do I know you're not just one of those cultists that are just trying to or some other thing that's trying to get my hopes up and bring my guard down. Well, I met your wife, oh, Jean-Marie, at the Garden of Diamonds. She does not really know her European geography very well. Um, neither do I, don't worry. Um, she has black hair, she has uh, brownish eyes. Um, she's very kind, very caring. Um, she showed me her apartment once, you guys have three bedrooms. You guys don't share the same bed. You have a guest bedroom. Um, that's 
I, I don't know how else I can prove it to you, really. I, I'm not interested in this whole cult thing. I'm here to find you and the two people that are downstairs right now. But I wanted to make sure you were real before I went to check in on them. He hears this, and you can't see his facial expression, but he, he goes, All right. And if I turn around, you're not going to stab me with that knife or anything, right? Not unless you give me a reason to. I mean, Jean Marie would be really upset. She's been really worried about you. He then slowly starts turning around. And you can see that um, now that you get like a very good look at him, you can see he actually seems to have lost a couple of his teeth after like receiving like a couple of bruises on his face. Yeah, I'm looking away from that from one of my fears trying to mm -hmm. make sure that i'm making direct eye contact yeah he isn't like necessarily beat up to the point where he looks like a corpse but yeah you don't want to take any risks mm -mm. Well, and... because of my dental damage fear that i have oh that's from... true too yeah. Yeah. oh yeah no you you immediately like look away and yeah he if, if, if this was like in a normal societal situation he would be offended but right now he's mm -hmm. like he does not care. Yeah, really, as... no offense, your wife shot someone's teeth out in front of me, so... I've kind of gotten a little scarred from that. He kind of looks at you and goes... Honestly, with the amount of stuff that is going on out there... I don't really care, I'm gonna be yeah, honest with you. Yeah, no, fair enough. Uh, but... He, he, he gives you a second look, he's like... Wait... You're not the... That's not the blood of a cultist on you, right? It's the blood of someone. I mean, I thought they they might be a cultist. I don't know. I've been I've been using it as a disguise. I heard you guys talking about it earlier. I'm kind of regretting having it on right now. Um, do you suggest uh, I wash it off? Yeah. Um, awesome. <laughs> he he immediately goes to like a bucket that uh he's left to the side. He goes. <sighs> this better be. Oh, this better fucking work. And he passes a sponge that he's made out of like ripped up pieces of clothing again, and just like uh, hands it to you. Uh, and and goes, I don't want to startle any of you more of like potentially seeing my teeth or anything. So just you can pass it on yourself. If you, whatever. Okay. Um, I'm uh gonna start cleaning myself up. You're, All right. You're sure those other two downstairs, they are real, right? I, um, you guys really need to have better guard and stuff going on here. I was able to sneak in really easily. Well, if they're faking it, they're doing a really good job. But they've been with me for the whole time, and I won't lie, after killing another contestant, I don't feel like ending up being alone. That's what, that's what, um, Jean-Marie told me. We saw, she said she saw you kill someone. Is that, I kind of nod at the, uh, corpse. Mm -hmm. Is that who it was? No, this was somebody that me and Peter were able to kill. Uh, I, I think that if I'm following the terms that they use for each other this one used to be a shepherd okay how, how is the blood coming off going by the way uh i'm gonna roll something oh <laughs> my survival mechanism is what got me killed ori zach <laughs> odds or evens Odds. Okay. Okay. You successfully passed, like, the cloth over uh, the blood that you were able to clean off. And for a split second, you felt kind of enticed to not actually get the blood off yourself. Mm -hmm. More so wanting to keep some of it on and feel comfortable with it. But... You pass the thought off immediately, scared that it's even slightly remote to, remotely related to anything related to the cult, mm -hmm. and 
you wash it off and you notice that at the tip of your fingers where like the last of the blood was you see what seems to be like where your skin was it's kind of like you know how when you get frostbite like your skin eventually goes to black because like the blood itself just freezes there oh yeah it looks like it was about to be like that but as you wash off the blood your skin itself goes back to its normal tint what the fuck This this is fucked up. Okay. Um. You you washed all of it off. I I think so. I mean. Every I every, every single part of you. I didn't put it in any undesirable spots. That is very unhygienic. Okay, good. And he grabs the rag immediately and like passes it through the water. That like, like he like, you see the the blood itself kind of like drench into, and then like he kicks the bucket away, like the water just kind of like. Splunge itself into the north and goes, All right, I'm gonna have to gather more cave water over the next couple of weeks. How <sighs> long have you been here? Me? It's yeah. been. He tries thinking about it. Honestly, it's been so long, I don't even know when it's been days or nights. It's, it feels like a while, but I know that for. Peter, it's been even longer, and yeah. for Fairchild, she's she's had to she's practically gone used to being around here. Um, did you come here on purpose? This is probably a stupid question, because you know I, I I came here on purpose, and so I wasn't sure if you had a reason to come or if it was no. just kidnapping. Yeah, no, I I was checking out some cat that, uh, well, no, Jean-Marie was trying to find some cat in an alleyway when we were going to, I think, the Garden of Diamonds itself, and now I just got taken away by this thing I never had a good look at, but that its eyes were looking back at me, and one moment I was in New York, and the next I ended up here, and I had this insignia scribed onto my head and I just had to fend for myself and I killed my first contestant recently and had to kill it that shepherd and we broke off from the group of contestants that we were hoping to not kill in order to avoid the game and well I guess you could, from the outside, you can imagine how well that went. I, uh... I think I killed someone for the first time the other day. If you can keep and count it as someone the other day. It was a couple hours ago, even. It was just some weird creature, you know? I... I got someone killed practically the second I got here. <sighs> Fuck, he's dead. I kind of like cover my mouth a little bit, letting it sink in that Adrian has been taken and I don't know what happened to him. Mm -hmm. Oh, fuck. Okay. Um, well, we should let the others know that I'm here, right? I mean... It'd probably be a good idea, especially I don't think Peter would want to fight somebody else today. No. Is he? he he's not a cultist, is he? No, he just... He just wore the ropes of another cultist to try to use it as a disguise, and... he's He's been doing alright with it. Okay. If anything, the one you should worry about is probably Fairchild. What do you mean? She's been... She's been getting... real sick recently. I... He kind of looks back at, like, the utter bloody table that you can see has, like, the scalpel and everything on it, and he goes, I'm... I'm not proud of what we had to do in order to survive, but sometimes we well 
We had to use the parts that were given to us. Oh. And I think she accidentally ate apart from I, this. I don't want to hear anymore. Thank you. Fair enough. Uh, just yeah. one thing is that she ate something she didn't, and I'm not sure how she's doing. What she's sick and weak, but she's not being physically weak by any means. If anything, she looks like she's been growing younger in comparison to she when we first met her. Doesn't look any different than when I last saw her, which was when I was maybe eight. Wait. Eight, twelve. I don't fucking remember how old I was in the backstory. How old are you, Downton? I'm, uh... Hold on. I think... Uh, I'm, I'm 24. He, you can tell that, like, even if you're not looking ahead at him directly... John is trying to make some calculations in his head. And he looks back at the corpse of the shepherd on the table before looking back and kind of goes, Okay. Uh, right. Yeah, all right. I... I'll digest that on another time, but she's going to have some explaining to do the next moment she gets up. Has she told you her real name yet? I mean, I noticed that you've been calling her Queen Fairchild. I mean, that's not like her name name, isn't it? Like, that's just a persona. That, I don't... If she has a real name, she hasn't given it to us. She just keeps telling us to refer to her as Fairchild, and Peter said that she had another name, but he summed it up probably just her having to get used to being down here and probably just sticking to one name to kind of keep her sanity. Right. From what she, From what she said, it's been years she's been trying to avoid killing and not being a part of the succumbing of Yatuidol and if I had to make a guess she's probably not all right in the head mm -hmm. well we should uh we should probably go downstairs to see the others I sent a a Pita outside with a distraction um and I don't I want to make sure that he doesn't get killed up there Right. Okay. I'll say that um, John puts away like his surgery clothes and stuff like that, or like the the robe that he had for uh, surgery, and he slowly starts making his way downstairs. And you see Peter is still kind of like holding onto the club, and looks at John making his way down, and then like immediately sees you, and like. He goes. He goes like, John, you you you're all right. And like immediately holding onto the club. He's like, hey, hey, it's fine. He's he's friendly. If anything, I I think he might know you too. And he kind of like just awkwardly like walks past and just lets Peter get a good look at you. And immediately like the hostility Peter had goes from like, holding the bat tightly with his hands and, like, preparing for the strike to letting it a bit more loose, letting it kind of drop to the, to the floor, but not too much to make noise, before he just simply utters. Eddie? Uh, man, you look even worse than the average factory kid now. You 
watch as like he lets go of the bat immediately and just rushes towards you and gives you probably the biggest hug you've probably ever felt in a long time and mm -hmm. he might have lost a little bit of mass but like he still has those like very like broad shoulders and arms and he just as he goes to lift, get, hold you in a hug he just lifts you off the ground and he's just like shit what the fuck are you doing here <laughs> looking for you three I, I, I didn't think I'd ever see you again. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you're alive. I, oh my god. It's... <laughs> and Eddie is kind of like looking at him, flashing back to the time he saw him in that door in the hotel room, and kind of like looks to like where he shot him. And is like, I'm glad you're okay. Same. I. Did you actually come down here to look for us? Yeah, yeah. I I was with some friends. I wanted to find you and um and John and Queen Fairchild. Me and some other people were on our way over here. Well, we got here, but we got separated. I got he, separated. He looks at the symbol on your forehead. He, he and you hear him go. You, you really, you really didn't have to do this. I had to. Yes, I did. But what about getting here? I, I can't imagine that those things and people would. Have I did a VDZ on you, kind of looking at you and how, like, terribly broken and sad you look. I don't, I don't, I don't want to talk about right now how I got here, or what I have to do to get here, if it's okay. Um, yeah. I'm just yeah, of course. You're okay. Absolutely, and he just, he reels you again for another hug, do you? Do you hug him back? Yeah, absolutely. You hold him back and... It doesn't resolve and heal everything that's happened in the last couple of weeks, but... God damn it, Evity, if this is not soothing you so fucking much right now for everything you've been through. It just... You feel his tight grasp around you, and it's. It reminds you of those times where you just were alone with him, having good talks and being real friendly, and just. It reminds you of smoother, simpler times. And eventually, as this moment that does last a couple of seconds but feels like a lifetime ends, he pulls away from you a little bit and goes. I, 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 I also can't believe that, like you and Fairchild, I, I think we can. I think we can really start trying to get our way out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and Marcy and Jean Marie should be getting here soon. I hope. So that should be, what, six of us working to get out of here? I mean, how many people here are working in teams? Not a lot. Um, we st The whole new batch of this game started out with 50 people, but whatever teams used to be, they're, they're probably long gone. They're, if I had to make a guess, they're probably on the verge of making it more of a free-for-all. I... Yeah. He, he... What he said was this, you have to kill people to get out and I think he mentioned there was a hundred people in here and they just unleashed more of those cultists I think yeah we we saw as they they arrived in center square and as long with those 
two things, John. What are they called again? Liquors. They're called liquors. Oh. Right. Well, they arrived recently, and they're really there to eradicate the rest of the batch. Supposedly, from what John has said, and what Fairchild has noticed, that they'll, when they feel like all, basically everyone is dead except for one, they'll do a whole swoop around of this area, and afterwards they'll, they're going to make the last remaining survivor a shepherd. I thought I thought he said that if you. I thought it's, he said that if you live, you get to leave. John kind of looks at Fairchild and goes, "That's what she thought so as well." Oh. But they get to leave, but just part of them, and even if you don't stay necessarily in the cult, you still serve them one way or another. This is a bad decision. I should have stayed with Jean Marie and Marcy. Oh, they were Peter bad. like, like sees you say these things. Like, hey, hey, you're fine. You, I don't know what they probably said, but they definitely are not of this world. And I wouldn't be surprised if you were charmed by them or they convinced you in any way whatsoever. Apparently, I slept with them at some point, so that may have clouded my judgment a little bit. Peter kind of, like, gives you this... He was another person at the time. It was a one-time thing. It's very confusing. I don't want to think about it right now, actually. And he kind of, like, thinks about Adrian's screams and mm -hmm. how he let him go. I'm sorry, this is a mess. Um... He kind of looks over at John. Uh, I'm Eddie, by the way. I probably got mentioned once or twice. Um, the John kind of like looks at you and then finally looks back at Peter and goes, Yeah, no, once or twice really doesn't cut it. <laughs> Peter says that you were one of the better parts of growing up and he missed you a lot for the last couple of years. And he kind of nods. Um, well. Um, okay, let me tell you what has happened. Um, and I'm going to give them like a little uh, like point by point recap of what's happened so far in mm -hmm. the coming. Sure. I'll say to you, bring it down to every single detail. Just <laughs> everybody kind of like gathering around and. I could go through uh, if you want. <laughs> if you want to. Okay, so basically, I'm at the Garden of Diamonds, right? I just started up doing bartending and stuff there. Um, we have another manager, by the way. Um, and basically, I'm sitting there, and Jean Marie is talking to this woman, and she's like, I have a patient that got out, and he talked about this resort, right? And so Jean Marie was like, Awesome, sign me up. I'm going to help you go look for this guy. Um, and so I went and talked to her too, and I was like, hey, have you heard of any, like, disappearing acts or anything like that? Um, because I was thinking about you and Queen Fairchild, obviously. Um, and so she was like, yeah, no, that's kind of like something you were talking about too. And so I was like, awesome, sign me up. And so we went over to a boat to start sailing over to Scandinavia. Um, and we met Marcible, who was the person who rid the, rode the boat, and we started, um, riding over there and we had a bunch of thieves that jumped onto our boat and that this creature um killed them a lot of them uh, jean marie shot another one right in front of me which was horrific um and then we watched as it killed all the people on the other boat and there was like a little raven symbol on there like one that's like been all around here um we ended up landing in oh god was it austria um and was it are we heading to i think i got confused we didn't go to scandinavia 
Yeah, you landed in Italy to we go landed to Austria. Italy to go to Austria. Sorry, my European geography is also not very good. Uh, we landed in Italy. Um, <laughs> Knowing yeah, by the map you fucking posted in the Discord, yeah, yeah. I'm not surprised. <laughs> we landed in Italy, um, and there we met um, a bunch of different people, and we met um, this guy named Adrian, who I went and had some good times with. Um, and he was like, hey, actually, I'm a hiker. And I actually know my way around those mountains and I could take you to the resort you guys are going to. I was like, I don't know. He seems kind of nice. I want to trust him. And so we took him along. Um, and before we did, there was this uh, other hiker who was like this older guy. And I went over and talked to him about the resort. And he said that he knew about it. And then he started having like a heart attack and stuff like that. Um, and so there, he took out his passport and the picture of his passport started like mutating and being weird, which is what happened when I came back to the Garden of Diamonds, uh, Peter. I don't know if you remember that the first night that I came back looking for Queen Fairchild. Um, yeah. And her, her picture started getting messed up just like that. And so I went upstairs and I had a panic attack. Um, and then there was a door and, you know, my dreams about doors and stuff. And it opened up um, and inside of it was you, Pete. Um, and I tried asking it some questions after like falling over to it. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so happy you're okay. And then it turned out to be like some weird creature. And so I shot it and then it turned back into you and was like, oh my God, why did you do this to me? Um, and so I went back down to it and I was like, oh my God, why did I do that to you? And then it was like, just kidding. Your mom and dad summoned me because they suck and they wanted me to kill you. Um, and so... I got stabbed, and I, like, lift up my shirt to show off the giant scar on my side mm -hmm. for putting my shirt back down. Um, yeah. And Adrian came, and he stitched me up, um, and then we started heading out towards uh, where the resort was after we, like, went into a giant police car chase. Um, mm -hmm. And so we got to the mountains, and we were going through, um, and we were like, I don't know if we can really trust Adrian anymore, because Adrian was kind of being a little fishy um and so we decided that adrian i went and talked to him and i was like hey i really would love to stay in contact with you you seem like a really nice guy but we can't take you with us i don't want you to get hurt and stuff um and so we left him we got to the resort um and we started getting chased around by all these things we found our way into a kitchen where there was this like weird butcher lady um, and I hid in an oven, and I went and stabbed her to death, and got my meat cleaver from her, and I, like, show my meat cleaver. Um, mm -hmm. and then in, like, this pile of corpses and stuff like that was Adrian. And we were like, hey, what the fuck? How did you get here? Um, and Adrian was like, I have no idea who any of you are. So then that's when I kind of realized that I slept with some weird eldritch abomination. Um, probably. Um, and so we treated Adrian, and we found our way upstairs, where we found my parents and Marcible's grandma, who were cultists, as well as, uh, Isaiah Doe, is that his name? Out of character? Yeah. Okay, where we found Isaiah Doe, um, and he was like, hey, you come in, and I came over, and he was like, hey, you could go to everybody right now if you join my game, and I was like awesome by the way is that adrian out in the hallway the real one and he was like no actually i was the adrian that you slept with um and it was nice and i was like oh great thanks um and so basically what i was considering is he said that on the fifth floor and we were on like the second floor at this point was where we would be able to get into the game right without having to make like a pact i don't know what's going to be on those other three floors and so that's why i made the decision to come in here with adrian to come find you guys to make sure that I didn't die out there before I got to you guys. Um, and Adrian didn't make it, but I assume Marcy and uh, Jean-Marie are making their way uh, to here, hopefully sometime soon. And so that's what my past week or so has been. Yeah, they both kind of look at you like very shocked by the series of events that have happened and i'll say that um as this is going on fairchild seems to actually kind of like 
muster up some strength after also listening in on this, and you, you hear her go, Eddie? Uh, yeah, Queen Fairchild, hi. It's me. I'm... Eddie? Yeah. What, one and only. You see... I think. She... Yeah, <laughs> you think. Is it really you, Eddie? I fucking hope so. <laughs> what if I just made you a god doppelganger the whole time? Dude, that would be so sick. Anyway, uh, I kind of like look over at her and I'll probably like walk up. Mm-hmm. She kind of very weakly opens her eyes towards you and goes, Well, I'll be damned. You really did make you all the way over here to see us. Yeah. I wouldn't... I wouldn't lose you guys again for the world. <sighs> Maybe in that case, there's still a chance. I'm... Yeah. Sorry you've had to go through all that. I would do it a million times over to be here right now. She very weakly gets up and kind of like turns to the side to look at you. And... Oh, this is going to be the make or break. She is going to make me a memory check. Oh, does she remember me? Oh, Zach, I'm gonna get hurt. I... I am praying that this check works. Zach, I will cry. <sighs> oh! <laughs> oh! Yes! Yes! That's a five. Oh! Oh my god. Oh! As she looks up to you, you immediately watch as, like, a wave of emotions just washes over her. And she... Tears up, actually, at the sight of you. No more energy to really, like, cry, but just tears peering down her face. As she's seeing the kid that she saved in that one streetway one time from those street urchins. And the person that she was able to help a lot into adulthood. And she... Looks at you and goes, Then maybe there's a way we can avoid all dying here. I found something to the north at the beak. Okay. What, what did you find? I think that the, when the people were making this this citadel or whatever they found or they were making something with something that was more recent of the time or something or maybe it was some hikers that were using it I don't know but there's dynamite lots of it to the north at the beak dynamite that has been abandoned for a long time I don't know how stable the cave here is, but from what John said, and John kind of speaks up, if I had to make a guess, I checked the nitroglycerin inside of the dynamite itself, and it's very volatile. I had to be very careful with it. If this cave and this citadel is as old as it is, we could try to spread the dynamite around where the citadel is and if it's strong enough and placed around just right 
and we're lucky. We can force in a cave and, and depending on how it goes, we could try getting out at the same time and that could force the game to be stopped as these cultists won't have a place to really finish their game in. But we'd have to be quick about it and very sneaky. Okay. Um, I think it would be good for us to wait for Marcy and Jean-Marie to get here first. I don't think we should do this without them. Because I don't want them yeah. getting stuck. And then having this them be the next two first contestants in another game. No, I I agree with what you mean by that. Well, do you know where they're at right now? I, they were on the second floor when I was last with them. Um, I don't know what time or how long I've been here. Um, I hope they're on their way soon. Okay. Well, here's hoping. Yeah. And if we get the chance, that would be amazing. But for now, let's just... If this whole dynamite thing is real, we should just wait around for now and just try to not get caught and not participate in the game as much as we can. Yeah. We can, we can, we can just stay here and wait. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay, that works. Yeah. We'll... Just stay here as long as we need. All right. Um. Pete, can I maybe talk to you alone for a little bit? I don't know if now was a good time, but I have something I've been meaning to talk to you about for a long time. Sure. Uh, John, you don't mind if we... And... Before, like, he even says anything, he just nods and goes, Yeah, go ahead, just be careful with the corpse with the shepherd. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're not going to even be close to that, don't worry about it. And he starts making his way towards uh, towards the stairs, looking at you, Eddie, and waiting for you to follow. Yeah, I'll follow after. Alright. The both of you make your way up the stairs... Avoid the operation room, room quote unquote, that John has been using, and you guys make your way to the other side of the room. It's just the two of you. Okay. Um. I don't want to die in here without telling you about this. The, the day that you disappeared, I was finally had mustered up enough courage to talk to you and I am totally aware of how bad this timing is um but if when we get out of here um <laughs> never mind this is kind of stupid um, Do you, he, as you say that, uh, Peter is going to, he's going to make a psychology test to uh, check on you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Natural one. <laughs> oh, that's a... That's a 17, and his uh, psychology uh, stat that he has was a 20. Oh, buddy. What does he read off of you? <sighs> I'm a very sad gay man whose boyfriend disappeared years ago, and I'm trying to let him know that I like him. <laughs> mm-hmm. <sighs> As you say, this whole thing is dumb. Yeah. And that... Uh, you try to, like, avoid the conversation. 
Peter just kind of takes one of your hands in his and puts his other hand on top. And you look at him and he goes, Eddie? Yeah? It's... It's not stupid. Um, I'm not going to lie with you. There was not a day or night or moment since I've gotten here that I have not thought about how things used to be. And I won't lie that ever since I've been stuck here, the one person I've been thinking about that's been my anchor and my source of hope of seeing again, despite everybody, was you. And I know it's probably been years and even longer at this point, but I was really hoping to see you again and I won't lie that I've missed hearing your voice and feeling your hand and mine and I'm not gonna lie I I just really wanted to see you again I love you and I, 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 I don't, I know that it's very sudden and just out of the brinks and I probably said that wrong as well, but look, I don't know if we are going to get out of here and when we do, how long it's going to take to recover, but right now I just want to hold you in my arms and have this moment to us, if that's okay with you. Yeah, 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 for sure. You t took the words right out of my mouth. Uh, there's definitely, like, surprise on Eddie's face, mm -hmm. you know? So he's definitely a little stunned, but nods. Yeah. Yeah, he he, he says that. Goes, I, it's not entirely just based on me being down here. Too. It's just, I. I really enjoyed the time we had together. Yeah. When we were back in New York, and I really felt like you, of all people, just kind of understood things. Um. Eddie kind of just nods. He's not fully sure how to respond. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I feel the same way, I mean, I've known you a long time, and I've, I've really missed you. He smiles at that, and as he holds his hand, he kind of just, can I, is it okay if I ask for another hug? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... Is it okay if I maybe give you a kiss? <laughs> he he doesn't even say anything. He just smiles and grabs your hands and like lets the, uh, like kind of puts them on both of his cheeks and waits for you to give to go. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys kiss a lot. Yep. <laughs> Queen Fairchild and John downstairs just like, so, uh, about that dynamite. Um, <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you, out of curiosity, Eddie, in this moment, especially because it's like, you finally get to reveal how you feel and, uh, just kind of, like, being emotional about it. Do you just keep it the kiss, uh, kissing, or do you do the yoinky spoinky and get I some luck points? we're probably gonna, well, I would get luck points from that. <laughs> hmm. How many luck it's points up to you right now? We're going into the Honest... finale, so it's gonna be hard. 
<laughs> All I'm thinking is that both of us are very tired. You just came out of a very bad fight. I just watched the last person I got luck points from die. In yeah, front of no, me that's because that's what I'm voice. telling myself. Because it's like I would not be surprised if Eddie just wants to be yeah. held right now. As much as Eddie would like to get more luck points, I think we're just gonna be cozy for now. Sure. I'll say that like after one hell of a makeout session. Mm hmm having, having a crush for three years and uh Oh longer than three years. <laughs> oh younger than three years, like oh, a, whole, yeah. a whole Yeah, it it, it 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 gets really pent up and oh, yeah. eventually after that uh I'll say that you two just kinda hold each other in like the corner of the room. Uh Eddie kinda like his back against the, the corner of the wall and you uh feel like your back uh towards his chest. Um your head uh kinda going like just right ex like just right in that nice comfort pla comfortable place where it's right between the neck and the shoulder. And you kinda lead your head you like you lean your head back a little bit and it's just Compared to all the sleeping belt rolls and ship soil, uh, uh, ship uh, surfaces and the beds that were eventually covered in blood, this is probably the most comfortable place you've been in in a long time. I think if it's okay with you, DM, I think Eddie might have his first dreamless sleep, maybe, if that's mm -hmm. okay with you. Yeah. Okay. I'll say that just being in this comfortable place and not having to worry about getting to here, fighting off creatures of the night or cultists or whatever the world has to throw of you and just enjoying being in the embrace of somebody you love who loves you back. You fall into a dreamless sleep that you just need because you just need to rest. And as you do so, enjoying a couple hours of being with the one you love we're gonna end your part of the finale of succumbing <sighs> i so thought i was gonna die man <laughs> i was also fucking scared <laughs> i was like i'm final girling this stuff and I, I was like okay i think i can do pretty well and then adrian died within like the first 30 minutes of mm -hmm. me being here i was like i'm not lasting another 10 like you said I saw a cultist, and I, like, fully made peace with myself that Eddie was gonna die there. <laughs> oh my god. I... I am so happy that you avoided not only that fight, but also fucking Demenza. Holy shit. I... I... literally feel genuine guilt that I left Adrian behind. I understand you. <laughs> I literally was sitting there, and I... I had to roll. I couldn't make up my mind. And I was, mm -hmm. I was sitting there, and I was like, I don't want to leave him. Eddie doesn't want to leave him. You know? But, like, logically, mm -hmm. Eddie knows that if he gets caught, then they both die. You know? And mm -hmm. it's ironic how at the start, like, you have to keep... He said, you gotta keep your head about you. Or, like, both of us are gonna die. Mm -hmm. And then... Yep, how ironic how he lost his head in that moment, and he lost Adrian. I'm so sad. I loved him, dude. Mm -hmm. I loved that NPC. Maybe he's just not dead, and maybe they just took him away for a little while. Yeah, you maybe know? he's just like, he's he's enjoying hey, a nice margarita. I got stabbed a couple times, you know? <laughs> and I was fine, <laughs> mostly. <laughs> Oh my god, oh. I don't want him to be dead. Uh... I... Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> oh god. Uh... Well, shit. That was a lot of fun. Oh, uh, <laughs> same. I'm I... not going to be sad when we go back to being a group, though. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. Like, the, the group finally finds you. It's just like, I've been cuddling with my boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, Marcible and Jean Marie have gone through three floors of hell, and I'm like, hey, my old boyfriend died, but I found my other one. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I, I was very sad that I lost my boyfriend and I had to basically sacrifice him to save my own skin, but hey, new boy. 
I think Eddie definitely feels guilty being with Peter right now, though, because I feel. Oh like no! Absolutely. He definitely is having a dreamless sleep, but it's a guilty one. You know, like he feels so bad that he's doing so well right now. Oh no! Absolutely, I would not be surprised. Like, my poor genuinely, you just like you're you're sleeping here and you're enjoying his presence, but like if you even survive out of this, I bet you the survivor's guild is gonna be insane. <sighs> I really didn't want to take him with me. I can't remember what I said last episode when he said he wanted to go. I think I said, I, like, I, think... I can't guarantee that you're going to be safe in there, or something along Yeah, the and, and you were right. <laughs> I wish he wasn't dead. Yeah, dead or worse. Yeah, right. if he comes back as, like, a villain at some point, I'm going to be so sad. Whoops! Who knows? Alright, well, we have to do an outro for this if we decide to make <laughs> this its own episode. Yeah. So, uh, thank you guys for uh, listening to me tormenting to Ori for the last two to three hours. Uh, tune in very soon for the second part of this mm -hmm. as we explore how Marcible and Jean Marie handled their side of things and see how the group can potentially come back together and you guys are able to stop the succumbing of Yathuitol. Thank you guys very much for watching, and uh, remember... Take antidepressants or something. <laughs> I don't know. Call, yeah, rem call your boyfriend, or your estranged father, not father. <laughs> and your friend's uh, husband. T t t yeah, t t Take your and take your antidepressants and call somebody you love very much and tell them that you love them. Yeah. You never know when a giant spider is gonna take them away. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh. I'm ending the recording. <laughs>